Emily and I'm going to show you how to make butter ganache. Butter ganache works incredibly well with froth foam because it pours straight in from the bowl, no need to pipe it. It's way less temperamental than normal ganache so we absolutely love it. And it's literally made of chocolate and butter. You can use milk chocolate, white chocolate or dark chocolate. For the purposes of the tutorial I am going to use white chocolate and the recipe um, or the steps are the exact same as they are for milk dark and white so they're all the same the ratios are just different we have all the ratios worked out for you on our website frostform.com and you'll have the quantities for every size cake you need so we've done all the hard work for you and so yeah we're going to start off by melting our butter i've just taken this out of the fridge you don't even need to leave it at room temperature and we're going to melt this fully so it'll take about a minute to a minute and a half depending on your microwave and how big your batch is so yeah i'm just going to microwave that on full power now okay so our butter is completely melted, three from the microwave, and then all we're going to do is pour that over our chocolate. And you want to make sure it's fully coating your chocolate, and we're going to leave that to set, or just sit still for a few minutes, so it'll start melting. While this is sitting, I'm going to talk to you about your butter and your chocolate and which types are best to use. So for butter, you want to use real block butter. You want to stick away from cultured butter. I know in Australia, Western Star is a brand that I've tried and it doesn't work as great. You don't want to use any margarine or things like that. You just want to use real block butter. So you can use chocolate like Calibo, which comes in bags and you can get that from cake supply stores. Uh, but that can sometimes be quite expensive but you can actually go into your supermarket and buy chocolate that works really well in butter ganache so you want to go down the confectionery aisle stay away from the baking chocolate because i find that can be a little bit temperamental although some brands do work but go down to the confectionery aisle and you want to get chocolate bars that you eat and look on the back of the packet for cocoa butter and they should work great just make sure if you're using bars that you break it up or chop it up nice and small so it melts nice and easy Okay, now our chocolate and our butter have been sitting for a little while. We're going to give it a little mix and it will start to melt. You will need to pop this into the microwave just for a few little more blasts until it's fully melted. And what you want to do is put it on for maybe 15-20 seconds at a time, making sure to be really careful not to overheat it. So every 15-20 seconds that you do a microwave before, you want to take it out and give it a really good mix because the residual heat will continue to melt it and that will make sure that we keep the temperature low. Okay, our ganache is fully melted and we have no bits of chocolate left in there. So now we're going to colour it and flavour it. So you want to use an oil-based flavouring or colour. And I am using our flavour bomb in lemon tart. You can use an oil-based flavouring. Any of the oils will work really well. And I'm just going to add a quarter teaspoon into this batch. The colour bomb, or sorry, the flavour bomb is quite strong it's probably twice as strong as normal flavoring so just start with a little bit and add more to flavor and that can go straight in like that and we're just going to mix that in and then for coloring you want to use an oil-based coloring stay away from gel paste as there's no water in this it can cause it to split or it'll kind of go spotty so we're using color bomb here you can probably see that our butter ganache is yellowy in color as with all ganaches and buttercreams, you might want to add some whitener in to lighten that colour. So we're going to give a decent squeeze of that in, which will help lighten it. You'll never get a pure white, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm just doing another little squeeze. You can also add in a couple of drops of lavender or a really, really small amount of violet, which will help to counteract that yellow tone so let's just do like a drop of violet in it goes and that just neutralizes that tone a bit so hopefully you can see there that it's lightened and then we're going to add in some hot pink so i would only ever whiten my ganache if i'm going to be coloring it a pastel color like a pastel pink or pastel blue if you want to do a darker color then you don't need to add any whitener because you'll struggle to get that depth with the whitener in it and um, so we'll do kind of like a, a mid-tone pink here so I'm using the color mill hot pink you can create some beautiful marbles of butter ganache by kind of half mixing your butter ganache or creating two colors and mixing them into the same bowl and then pouring that in and it looks really awesome 
but there is a lovely kind of candy pink colour there so I'm really happy with that. Okay so now we're ready to pour it in. If you find that your ganache is starting to separate a little bit, let's say the oil is coming out, then you just want to leave it sit for a few minutes and then give it another mix before pouring it in. Just let it cool down and then mix it to combine everything again. But we're ready to go here so I'm just going to pour it straight in and it's super super easy. Just pour it directly on top and watch it fall down the sides. And then you want to stop pouring when it covers the top. And then we're just going to give it a little shake just to help those air bubbles come up and a gentle tap. You don't want to be tapping this too hard. Just a nice gentle tap. And the great thing about the form and the liner is that everything's clear and see-through. So if you're missing any areas, then you can just check and give it another little shake. Also kind of gently pushing the sides, help any little air bubbles come up. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. So that's going to go into the fridge or freezer to set. It'll take two to three hours in the fridge or you can pop it into the freezer for say 20 minutes to 30 minutes should be enough. So you don't want to ever freeze it. You just want to get it nice and cold so that ganache sets and then I'll be ready to show you the final results. Okay, our cake is fully set and you'll know when it's set when you pull the liner away and it comes away cleanly. So we're going to remove our base. So we're just going to grab our object like your tin of beans, whatever you have. And we're just gonna pull our former down, just like so. Then you can grab a non-slip mat, it's super handy for this. Just undo your clip, and then we're gonna start peeling it away slowly but surely. All the way, just like so, that's it. So here is our lovely frost form cake, straight out of the form. Okay, so next we're just going to do some touch-ups to get our cake even more perfect and to start off with you will get a tiny little bit of a lip from where the, the ganache meets the side of your liner. All you need to do is grab a palette knife and just scrape that off like so, all the way around. Okay, and now we're going to remove our baseboard. So to do that we're just going to pop a board on top and slide it to the edge of your turntable. And we're just going to flip. Don't be scared, it's easier than you think. Pop your cake back down, then grab a knife or a palette knife and just slide it right under your acrylic base. Just get it in there. And it should pop off nice and easy like so. And then you're going to remove your base liner the same way. Just pop your palette knife into the edge there and peel it off gently and then you're done. And then we're going to grab our board. You can use your board that you're going to display it on. You can pop a bit of buttercream or ganache onto this now so that you can secure it onto your board. And then we're just going to flip it again. Like so. And then you can pop a non-slip mat on here. So I did get a little air bubble, which can happen, but I'm going to show you how to fix it, which is super easy. So just grab a palette knife. And just with some leftover butter ganache, this is just the, the end of the amount in my bowl. And now it's set up so it's kind of a spreadable consistency, which is perfect for filling in any holes that you have. So just grab a palette knife and just put a small bit in there and then we'll just scrape back over it. Yeah, and it's gone. Super, super easy. And then the next thing is you will get a little seam from where your liner overlaps. And we have a super handy tool for that. So these are called the frost finishers and they come in a set of three. There's three different sizes in the set um, for different size cakes and for different things that you want to do. So these have three sides which are functional. The main one I like to use is for using the curved side to remove your seam. And because it's curved, when you swipe it up the side, it'll remove that seam super, super easy. So usually one or two little swipes and it's gone. And that's it guys, and we're done. So that is how to use your round frost form for with butter ganache. I hope you enjoyed it, hopefully you can see the results, how perfect it comes out, how sharp those edges are gonna be, and super, super easy. It takes minutes to do. And let us know how you get on, make sure to tag us in your cakes, if you need any help, don't be afraid to pop us a message. We're always available. And happy caking, guys. Bye.